Are you still typing out this or are we ready? You ready, Sarah? She's ready. Okay. So we've got this set up. Notice this was not Java, right? This was the pseudocode. This is like Java-ish. Eventually we want to be writing all of our handwritten stuff in Java-ish speak. So from main, we want to run our method. We do that by calling up the method. Now, last time, how did we run the method print statement? How did we do it? How did we call it? We went inside main and wrote what? We write the method name. So let's do that. And so now I should be able to come here and say display price with tax. Open close parenthesis semicolon. No. I really need everyone to pull up this error message and realize that it is your friend and we're going to read it and we're not going to be the people that get a red line and freak out because they don't know what it says. We need to internalize this in our bones. What does this error message say? Please read it, someone. Method display Method display Oh, sorry. I was trying to zoom. I made the problem worse. Cannot be applied to the given types. Yes. Require double bound. So, <coughs> no no argument. argument. Reason. Actual formal argument list. Different. Actual and formal argument lists differ in length. First of all, what's an argument list? The argument list is everything that occurs inside these parentheses of the method call. So this would be list item 1, list item 2. Now, that's not, what, that's not Java. I'm just demonstrating it. So what it's saying is, I know, I know what display price with tax is. It's a method. It's in this own class. And display price with tax requires an argument of type what? Double. I will not let you call this method without giving this method what it's specified. It's a contract. The method says you must give me a double and then I will do what you tell me if the coder coded to specification. So do we have a double to give it? Do we have a total price? Does anyone see a price up here? We will. Yes, I want to demonstrate the even simpler case, which is how about I just give it a double, like a hundred. It just needs a double. It can be a variable value that holds a double, or it can just be a double. It just needs a double. It doesn't care what the double is. It just needs As long as it's not what? It's the largest double, and then you calculate something larger. That's very good. But it would accept it. It would accept it, but it would. It would not create a runtime error, or not create a compile time error. Chris is on top of it. He said there is a maximum size of double, which is an incredibly long number. It's 32 bits long. It's massive. And if you gave it the highest possible double and it added 7% to it, when you tried to store it in this, you would get a runtime exception for unable, I don't know, we'd have to test it. Um, in C, you don't get an error. It just chops off whatever it can't store and you get number. So when you're coding down an you have no idea what's going on because the compiler just reads 32 bits and sticks it in there. It doesn't care if there are extra bits. Um, Java will probably give you an error. So now if I run this, where's my output? Ooh. Ooh, look at that. So we don't have to make a variable? We don't have to make it variable. The method just needs a double. That is so cool. That is so cool. Now, this isn't very programmatically useful. Why? 
This is a cash register. Is every sale price going to be $100? No. no. Um, unless it's the $100 store where every item's $100. That would be, that's a neat business model. Someone could go in for that. What kind of things would be a good deal for $100? $100 and below. No, it can't be $100 and below because it's hard coded $100. That's the point. We wrote code that is, does not address variability and it will only <laughs> give you the tax for a $100 purchase. Yeah, you can get um, uh, used laptops for $100. You can get video equipment for 100 bucks. Okay, so let's not make it variable. Let's, or let's not make it hard coded. Let's say um, we can make a variable of type double. So we can say s double sale price equals, let's put our 100 back in there just to make sure we know what's going on. We're back. I deleted the hard-coded 100, so it's not happy. How do we make this happy now? How do we satisfy the contract? Yeah, so we can now add sale price into our method. So now it is, it is getting past a container that stores doubles, meaning it doesn't know what the double value will be. All it knows is whatever sale price is, it will get passed down to display price with tax, and then it will uh, complete its its work. Let's see how this this compiles. It should be what exactly the same. We haven't changed programmatically what's going on except for the way that that value is making it in. All right, what's our next step? Look at this. We've seen this chart before, except now. The input, we say the input argument or the input parameter is passed down with the call. Right now we have a, a call in which there's something being said. And it hits the, it has to match up. So if the method declaration asks for a double here, the call must have the double there. You can pass in a bunch of stuff, it just has to be in the same order. So if we said double price, we'll do this in a second, and then we needed another piece of data, we'd have to pass in two things and they would march down together. As soon as it reaches the parameter, then it is stored in the local variable called price. It's not the same variable. Price is only local here. See, I made you a little box. This is the price variable here locally. It uses it in the calculation, it stores it in another local variable, total price, and then it dumps it to the print line. Now let's prove to ourselves that this is a local variable. How could we test that price is a local variable? I think there's a better way. Meaning it's local to the method display price with tax. So what method shouldn't know about price, if what I said was right? Main. Anything but, yes. So if I come here and say, well, why don't we just try printing out uh, price? What does it say? Find Cannot find symbol. Because it only exists from the opening curly brace to the closing curly brace of the method in which it was declared. And it was declared in the declaration of the method. This is a little tricky. This double price is exactly the same as this double price. It's exactly the same as that in terms of the syntax for creating it. It's just that when we create it inside these parentheses, it, is only, it only becomes a variable in memory when this method is called. I can't get it up here, cannot find symbol. Next Monday we will learn that we can put variables outside of any method and then all the methods can access them, called member variables. That's on Monday. Okay, so uh, we've got this nicely put together. I'd like you to...